<laughs> uh, hey everyone, it's Brad. It's been a very long time. Um, I really hope all of you, through the COVID craziness and the election craziness, are all doing very well, uh, as best as you can. I know that's optimistic of me to think that everyone is, but my fingers crossed. Uh, are, my fingers are crossed for you, and certainly my heart goes out to all of you. And I really hope that you're all uh, going to come out of this, you and your families, and your loved ones, and your friends, and everyone, come out as best as possible. So with that out of the way, um, I certainly wish you well. Um, in this video, I'm going to, uh, among other things, <laughs> um, uh, explain, uh, you know, show how you would actually do the uh, brake fluid flush. Because, just to, as I anticipated, I think you've heard me say before, every couple of years you should really flush your brake fluid. Um, <laughs> I was just about to think about doing that. In fact, I'd already bought the brake fluid. Just uh, one small jar is probably all I can, uh, probably all I need for this. Uh, lo and behold, the one, seven, and nine maintenance minders came up. So, um, any of you who've seen this channel or had a, a clarity yourself, obviously you know what one and nine are. One is uh, oil uh, oil change. Um, this car has had. Since COVID, I've driven it maybe half a tank on fuel. So it does not need the oil, so I'm not gonna do that. In fact, I just checked it. It looks as clean as the day I put it in. Uh, nine is the tire rotation, um, but because of where I live, um, I'm just gonna use this time, as I always do, to switch off the all seasons and put on the winters, which I have right over there. Um, Actually, where I live, it can have studded. So this car is fantastic in the winter uh, for a front drive car. We all know that it's great. Uh, heats up super well, tracks well. You know, traction control, ABS, all the rest. That's fantastic. But it's front drive, so I have a little bit of trouble where I live for some ice. So I went with studded uh, Hakapalita nines. Actually, if you're interested, um, and I'm, you know, I'll be interested to see how much better they are than the actual winters that I had last year. So. All that aside, the big thing I'm going to do today is number seven popped up, which is got to flush the brake fluid. So um, as I jack up the, the, each side to switch the tires, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how you can actually uh, flush your fluid yourself. So things you need, you need a car that has some brake fluid that needs to get out. Um, I have a hand pump, which I will go off camera here. Um, any of these will work. Um, Everyone knows, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you right now, brake fluid is probably the best way to remove <laughs> paint off of things, so be careful with this. You can see I've used it before. I used it when I put the S2000 together. Um, I'm going to use it here because it's just me in the garage. There's no, uh, no one else. So I'm presuming I can do that. I've been able to do that with other cars. So the whole procedure here, drain, you use the, um, uh, the pump to suck the, as much fluid out of the master that you can because even though it's okay It still gets dark really quick So that's actually a good thing because you fill it with clean fluid and then you go uh, To each wheel and you pull fluid with the pump until it comes out clear now Remember you got to keep checking the master cylinder as you go about this because if you start sucking air Then you got to do it all over again, and it's even more of a pain in the you know what so um, and one other wrinkle is uh, most manufacturers recommend that you bleed the brakes, uh, you know, in this case it's kind of what you're doing, from the, starting from the furthest wheel from the master cylinder, which in almost all cases is clearly the right rear, and then the left rear, then the right front, then the left front. So that's the order I'm going to do these in, and along the way I'm going to put the tires on. So, um, this is a long introduction, but thank you for sticking with me this long, and let's get to it. Uh, there, so in my journey of discovery here, I've already found my first issue. Um, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but as you can see, the reservoir for the master cylinder here is actually chambered, and there's really going to be no way to get um, uh, the pump in there and actually withdraw any of that fluid. So what I'm going to do, I took out the you know the strainer. Here's the strainer. Obviously, taking the cap off. Um, even though it won't be at that height when um, it's full, I'm going to, or when it's done, when I'm done, I'm going to fill it up so that I get a good chunk of fresh fluid in there. And then I'm going to go to the right rear and actually start to uh, uh, draw the fluid through. Okay, so you find me at the back wheel here, the right rear. I've taken off the little dust cap off the uh, bleed nipple, which I'll show you. But get a load of this rear suspension. <laughs> Like, look at all that linkage. Um, that's an awful lot. One, one bushing, two bushing, one bushing, two bushing, three bush, four, five. Uh, and it's all fantastic. I mean, the car clearly rides really well. And this is all for the trickery because look at that. Oops, it's banging the car. That looks an awful lot like the battery. So it's got to do all this in order to um, facilitate everything we want to have going on here. But holy man, that's a lot. Um, wrinkle number two, see there's the bleed screw right down there. You can see the wrench on it. It's an 11 mil and of course I have 10, I have 12. So 
luckily a 7 16 will fit on that so um, as we are here um, like I said I've topped up the, res the reservoir uh, it's not leaking over of course so I filled it right up with fresh fluid so when I start yanking the fluid out of here with the pump um, well, once we get the, some decent clear fluid then I think we can be done but I'll probably do it twice for each wheel so I'm gonna put you down so you can uh, get the luxury of watching me do that hang on one okay second. so from here I've found the right end for my hose uh, and I'm about to um, keep your jokes to yourself stroke this thing a bunch <laughs> so that it builds up vacuum in this line before I crack the bleed screw because that's pretty imperative so the strategy I'm going to employ here is I'm going to again pump this thing a lot get a lot of fluid to come out and while fluid is still coming out I'm going to close the valve so that it's always fluid is always being drawn out so you can hear me stroking the pump terrible uh, the needle on this thing by the way is going up so that shows that it's happening and then I'm going to crack it uh, as best I can it's tricky because there's not a lot of room for uh, my long wrench in here I should actually get a short one but let's see come on baby come on there and I'm not seeing any fluid coming out yet so awkwardly with my left hand while I'm videoing and while I'm doing this I want to see if I can actually open this thing enough to get some fluid out of it so uh, none is coming out so that's a trick that's a challenge here so hold on Ugh. oh there's some okay see this is a bit trickier than I'd like so I'm gonna keep <laughs> stroking the pump the pump here fluid is starting to come out you can see it won't come out free, free of bubbles because clearly from the the, the, um, uh, the nipple that fits over the bleed screw uh, will uh, let air in but I'm pumping a lot you know the fluid is still kind of dark so I'm gonna keep doing that and then while there's still a bunch of uh, vacuum in this line I'm going to shut this thing so you kind of keep doing it at the same time not elegant but it gets the job done and then we'll just tighten this one down and then we'll see uh, where the fluid is honestly this is such a pain in the butt all right there that's done on one well not done that's uh, the first kick at one so let's I'm going to pause and go have a look at the uh, master cylinder and see how much fluid I drove. Uh, I it. Hi, so you join me here on the left rear. I've already done the bleeding just because it's a bit uh, pedantic and a bit awkward to do with the camera, uh, a wrench, a light, and then the whole pump mechanism. But again, I drew a whole bunch of fluid out here, so it's nice and clear now. Um, again, it looks like the fluid in the bottle as opposed to the kind of darker stuff in the reservoir. But uh, while I was here, and I've been checking each one as I go along, um, I'm amazed at how much brake is still left on this car. My, again, mine has 64,000 kilometers on it, which is like 42,000 miles. There's a slight, slight ridge here. Now again, I didn't check that when it's new. The fronts do not have that, and I'll do a, a comparison on the front when I get to that point. But also, um, if you can really see in there, Look at how much pad is left on that. So uh, I'm pretty religious when it comes to using the regen feature, um, almost to the point where I hardly use my brakes uh, when I can get away with that. Um, but I'm shocked at just how long uh, these pads are lasting because again, you gotta remember, this car is north of 4,000 pounds. So, um, you know, it's a lot of the battery that's right back here. So it, it's doing a lot of work um, to slow this car down just the same way that it uses a lot of energy to accelerate it. So. Um, I'm really impressed with how well the brakes are holding up. Uh, and I'm not surprised, but I am impressed. I think I'm allowed to be that way given what I know about this car. So um, now I just have uh, uh, the fronts to do. So I'll finish up doing those. Because again, you start the right rear, the left rear, the right front, and then the left front. And then along the way, you'll see that I've put my uh, winter tires on. So let me uh, stop this here and then move to the left, the, uh, the, uh, the front. Thanks. Okay, so now I'm on the right front. Um, you have to go back into the right rear again when I, once I said once I have an assistant here to help me, but already this is looking much better because um, I have a clear access to this and I can get a good uh, you know half a turn off that bleed screw. but <laughs> back one's 11, front ones are 10. so keep that in mind. Not really sure why that was necessary, but it is. so uh, and again, before I start this step, the um, Reservoir is full, so I know I'm not going to, uh, you know, pull the fluid through until I can actually make the reservoir dry because then that's a huge pain in the ass because then you got to draw all the fluid out and all the bubbles out even more. So, same mechanism here or same uh, procedure. So, again, draw a bunch of uh, uh, vacuum into the lines with the pump. Uh, crack this for the first time. There we go. And there, there's a lot of fluid coming out of that. Again, it won't be. Uh, like a clean line, it'll be a lot of bubbles in it because of uh, 
uh, this union right here. But look, I'm getting a lot of fluid out. Uh, it's actually starting to get a little cleaner through the lines, you can see. So let's, you know, tighten that up. Um, take this off. You can see, you still feel here that there was vacuum there. So look, that's coming out. A lot of bubbles in there to make it lighter, but even the fluid that's in the line is getting uh, cleaner. So let's uh, let's go back to the red, the master cylinder, and make sure this top. And there, I actually wanted to show you because if you can see, the fluid's pretty high, even though it looks dark in the center, it's actually very clean on the outside. So we're making good progress, which means by the time we get around to each wheel, we'll be drawing an awful lot of clean fluid through the lines, which means if there's clean fluid up here and there's clean fluid coming out of each of the lines, then we've got uh, a decent job of flushing the brakes on this thing. There, I'm now down to my last wheel, which is my left front. Um, and this one I'll actually uh, have a bit of footage for just so you can kind of see again the mechanism that I use. So uh, this one's cool because again, look at how much, um, <laughs> again, keep the jokes to yourself, stroke you can have on the wrench, at least a good 180 degrees almost because that really helps the flow uh, as it draws the fluid out of the, uh, through the caliper, through the lines, up to the master cylinder. So um, again, I've got the pump in my hand, uh, this thing on the nipple here, I'm going to immediately begin by adding vacuum to the lines and then I'm going to crack it as you'll see. I'm going to use my right hand though. Um, again, bad jokes to yourself, please. So there, see, look, all the fluid coming out. This one's really handy. Again, it'll look like that because there's a lot of places where air can still get in, but as long as the fluid's coming out, and you notice it's actually getting a little cleaner too, because um, again, the the fluid is a little bit dark, not terribly, terribly dark, as bad as I've seen, but look at how much is coming out. I'm getting tons, so I'm gonna take a break there because I don't wanna run the master cylinder dry, because again, that would be a big pain in the butt. So you'll hear, See, there's still vacuum on this, and that's important. So this is tight. Um, so now we go up and I'm just gonna stand up and check the master. Uh, yeah, it's a touchdown, so I'm gonna add some. You get the, the pleasure of listening to me do that. And uh, as I said, I have rags everywhere because honestly, um, <laughs> it can't be st stated enough that uh, brake fluid is one of the best ways to remove paint from anything you care about. So I have lots of rags on hand. I've got old shirts, I've got old towels. Um, Nothing's worth um, what uh, what damage this thing, these can, things can actually do. So I'm just going to do it one more time. I'm very confident, again, on how clean that fluid was, but you'll see how it works here. And then, yeah, see a whole bunch more is coming out. So I'm very confident that that's the entire line all the way through up to the master cylinder, again, through the um, uh, ABS distribution block, which is also part of this whole rigmarole. Uh, it's also coming out through there. So again, you'll hear the vacuum as I take that off. So I'm confident that this is uh, this one is blood, uh, that there aren't any air bubbles in that because again, I've been doing nothing but drawing fluid through the lines. I haven't been introducing any air into them. So, <coughs> excuse me, the last thing I need to do is just make sure that the master is topped up, that it's clear and clean rather, and uh, then I put the wheel on and put it down. So let me pause here and I'll go up and then I'll show you just how clean that master reservoir is. So hang on one sec, thanks. Uh, so there, uh, even though it looks a little bit dark at the bottom, just a little, you can see definitely how much cleaner it is up along the edge here. So I'm just gonna top it up, I'm trying to do this with one hand here. See how much cleaner that is? It looks great as far as I'm concerned. So now I'm gonna be very careful and drop that in, uh, the strainer and see, and if it overflows any, Good, it's not. See, look at how clean that, oops, sorry. <laughs> there, sorry, we'll start there. Uh, I just dropped the strainer, and now look at how clean that fluid is. It looks great. It actually looks a little green on the camera here, but uh, um, ordinarily, if I wasn't videoing, I would also clean up this dust, or the dust off the cap, because then I like to clean as I go. Um, <laughs> the underside of this car is definitely, definitely dirty, though, because uh, it gets used a lot. This car is a fantastic car, but it's the reason why it's so good is because it gets used like crazy. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, where am I here? So cars on the ground, all four wheels have had the same treatment that I showed you on the left front and the right rear. Um, clean fluid is through. The tires are on <laughs> uh, with the steel wheels. It actually looks a bit like a cop car, I have to laugh. Uh, I will take it to the car wash and clean them up. Um, the whole car, frankly. And then, as I said, the, the uh, despite the fact that it's asking me for uh, to change the oil, I really don't think it needs that because, <coughs> excuse me, it's very clean. So. Uh, only one step left is to A, make sure the brakes work, so I guess there's two steps, and the other is to clear the maintenance code. So hang on for a minute, and I'll do that too. Okay, well you find me back in the car. The brake, <laughs> the brake pedal has pressure, so that's good. So now it's time to get rid of these maintenance uh, items here. So as we all know, you go to your screen here, you go to settings, uh, you go to vehicle, 
Uh, I got to scroll one down to maintenance info, and then that tells you what they are. Uh, and then, oh, actually, chassis inspection. Forgive me, that's number nine. So, uh, oil and filter. Again, I've told you I'm not doing tire rotation. I just did with putting the winters on and brake fluid is just what I do. Saw me do. So, select reset items. Um, I'll do items. Uh, would you like to do that? And I go reset. And then it will think for a second. There we go. And now we're clear. So that's easy as well. So the other thing I'll do while I'm in here, frankly, because I just put in my new tires, is I will also do a uh, TPMS calibration. So um, these are set for 32 pounds. Uh, every tire shop in the world seems to do that. I tend to run them a little higher because this car is heavier in the rear, but I'll leave it for now. And uh, off we go. So there you have it, folks. Tire reset, uh, or tire pressure monitor reset, uh, maintenance monitor reset, fluid flush, tires changed, oil is fine, and off we go. So Again, a couple of final points here, if I can do this. Let's do this and not look too ridiculous. There we go. A couple of final points on this. Step one, always use a new can of brake fluid because brake fluid, as everyone knows by now, is hydroscopic, which means it absorbs water, which means that if even if it's open and sealed, it won't be factory sealed, it'll still absorb water out of the atmosphere uh, just because of that's the way it is. So you're not saving yourself any money. It's like eight bucks for a thing of fluid, which is all I used here. I used effectively about half of that bottle. So uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is please be sure that you have enough rags to make sure all the brake fluid as you add, if you splash anything, that you can wipe it off anything that has paint that you want to keep because brake fluid, uh, as I keep saying, uh, is an excellent remover of paint or color or anything like that. So you don't want it to sit around either. So, and then of course, the usual warnings of when you're jacking up a car, please be careful. I don't need to tell you that. This is just for some mild entertainment and a little bit of uh, information, I hope, as well. And one final thing, which I'm going to hope will make you laugh uh, since you've stuck around this long. Hang on one second. Okay, I'm at the right front wheel here, and I have to say, this made me kind of laugh out loud because these are steel uh, winter tires. They're made in China, so obviously they were inexpensive, which is why I bought them. But of course, last winter, uh, I bumped a curb and it dented this part right here. So before I took these in, I actually took my cold chisel and a small sledge and I pounded that out so that it didn't uh, have uh, uh, the big dent there. But, and I was wondering if the tire shop was gonna give me any grief about it, but they didn't. But look at the, <laughs> the weights they've had to put on this thing to balance it. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, if I were to do it again, folks, spend the extra money and get a decent set. These were 70 bucks Canadian each. For 100 bucks, I could have got way better, uh, a way better set of steel wheels. So um, that's a lesson learned there. But it did make me laugh that my hack job of a cold chisel and a sledgehammer actually straightened this thing enough that they could balance it, even though it's uh, that's the most weight I've ever seen on a on a uh, a room in my life. So anyway, there you have it, folks. Um, Exciting as always, but I hope it was somewhat informational for you. Uh, again, don't be shy of doing these things. You just have to make sure you do them right. Otherwise, you could cause yourself some grief, especially when it comes to brakes. But uh, for those of you who have made it this far, I thank you for all of that. And always, please, please, please be careful out there. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, you know all of you are healthy, happy, uh, safe, and we can all get through this uh, eventually together. Anyway, all the best, folks. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.